hello i would like uh, uh, to thank you for watching my video for the online conference geopv and um, uh, first of all i would like to thank the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to present my uh, work here today about a stability study of manipulated conjugated polymers in uh, polymer solar cells and uh, yeah, my name is Ilona Heckler and I'm from the Tech University of Denmark. The research in polymer solar cells is mostly focused on uh, uh, small spin coated devices um, to, to reach high uh, efficiencies of over 10%. However, this, um, uh, this focus should be shifted towards also good processability of the devices to uh, that we get uh, also high quantities of polymers. In our group, um, we already have this focus on a, a good processability and we are already able to uh, produce uh, large amounts of polymer solar cells. Uh, this we can already see here in this, um, in this picture is, uh, uh, you can see the, um, you can see the the picture of a big printing machine we have where we can then produce large amounts of uh, polymer solar cells. Also in our group of course we have a focus on the efficiency and nowadays we get efficiencies of up to 5% um, uh, for these large devices. A third focus is uh, also the stability and uh, the stability of polymer solar cells is where my work will contribute in. Um, in my work specifically, I will focus on the stability of polymers and of the active layer of polymer solar cells. The active layer of, a, uh, of uh, polymer solar cells consists in our case of a blended mixture of uh, polymer and a fullerene derivative. Um, however, uh, this layer is or can be quite unstable towards uh, external stress like heat. And uh, you can see in this TM picture that uh, yeah, the active layer after some time un, uh, by heat influence uh, starts to phase separate and we get like uh, fullerene crystals and uh, polymer domains, so which can result in lower efficiency. Um, to undergo this, this um, phase separation, uh, there are different strategies. The morphology, for example, can be freezed um, by, by cross-linking of this azide group, um, which means uh, that we get a freezed morphology and uh, it's, uh, yeah, the morphology is more stable and, uh, uh, mm, yeah, heat doesn't have so much influence and cannot phase separate it. Uh, another strategy is to uh, um, to use this ester group, which is uh, cleavable with heat. So um, it is necessary because um, the polymer for uh, coating needs to be soluble. Um, but after coating, these side chains are not necessary, so they can be removed with heat, and we, it is resulting in a, a plain polythiophene, which is insoluble and um, thermostable. Um, a third route is to introduce these, these uh, side chains. In this case, uh, uh, it was introduced a uh, phenethyl group and uh, it was shown by a group in, um, in Belgium, uh, which are also our collaboration partners, that uh, the thermal stability was improved due to uh, higher glass transition temperature. Um, they, they also uh, use these uh, ethanol or in general alcohol side chains to see if this has an effect and they could show that uh, the side chains also improve the stability. So in my work I will focus on this pathway of, of um, uh, improving the, the stability. However, uh, I will use uh, different polymers. The polymers I will use and or I was using in my uh, study are uh, are from a study, previous study we did before, 
and where we did a large screening of different polymers and uh, we could sort out the ones which were suitable for roll coding, which for example, because this is very important for us that they're um, that they're able that we're able to code them and uh, that they give a, a quite nice performance. So uh, the polymers I used were these three: P1, P2, and P3. And um, because they have different side chains, P1 and P2, uh, they have the hexa side side chain which I manipulated, uh, while P3 has also the hexa side chain, but also I manipulated the hexile uh, side chain uh, in the acceptor of a part of this polymer. Um, uh, then I synthesized some uh, what I call manipulated polymers, and um, so I have these backbones where uh, these side chains were exchanged and for P1 I used a phenethyl side chain where we then get P1 D phenyl. I only used in all cases 10% uh, of the side chain otherwise the polymer might not be soluble anymore um, uh, so it needs to have a solubility side chain which stayed the same uh, as the original polymer. P2 uh, was also with the phenethyl side chain where I, um, I get the polymer P2D phenyl. Um, and P3, there I did some more variations. I ver varied it with the phenyl uh, where I get P3D phenyl and with an alcohol ethanol side chain where I get P3D OH and P3A OH. Um, so in total I have four polymer here, so the original and three variations and um, for P3 and um, for P2 and P1 I have uh, one manipulated and one original polymer. <coughs> the polymers were synthesized via stiller cross-coupling uh, by randomly incubation of uh, all the monomers. Um, and yeah, resulting in, in an ABC polymer. Um, from the polymers, they were measured UV uh, spectras. And um, so we have the polymer, we have the dashed polymers, except of the black one, are always uh, the original polymers, while the solid lines and the black dashed one are the manipulated polymers. For P1 and P2, which are the green and the red one, you can see that uh, the manipulated and the original polymer they don't vary, uh, have a different, don't have a different variation. So uh, the spectrum spectrum is quite similar. While for P3, there we can see that P. Here we can see that P3 uh, DOH and P3, the original one, they are quite similar, so they have around 700 nanometers, um, a nice peak, while the other two, P3D phenyl, P3 and P3A, OA, OH, uh, they are also very similar to each, to each, towards each other. However, uh, they don't have this um, they only have a shoulder around 700 nanometers, so uh, the UVV spectrum is slightly different. Um, of the these of the polymer films, which were were, were of the polymer films where I measured UVV spectroscopy with, um, they were also afterwards used for measuring photodegradation of the polymer films, and uh, this is the setup I, I was using, where we have here one sun and um, underneath there was this rotating uh, wheel uh, where the films or the glass slides with the films were added to and uh, after two or five minutes um, UVVIS uh, was measured um, during um, exposure to, sol uh, to, to uh, 
uh, solar simulator. And uh, the following curves could be detected or um, we, we can see here the absorption against the time. Uh, it was in total up to six, 60 hours for P1 and P1 manipulated. And we can see that for both of them it's around 60 hours, so we cannot see an improvement. Uh, while for P2 it's uh, very similar. Um, they seem a little bit different, but the slope of the curves is very similar, so um, they also perform very similar. When we look, however, at P3, um, then we can see that P3 and P3D phenyl, they are very similar, uh, but P3DOH, um, so with an ethanol side chain on uh, on the donor part of the f uh, of the polymer, uh, there we can see an improvement. While on we have the ethanol side chain on the acceptor, there we can see uh, that it uh, uh, that the stability is even worse than for the uh, original polymer. Um, so, which means that incorporating this group in this position is not so good. Um, of course, from these polymers, they were also uh, um, applied in polymer solar cell, and therefore I used this um, mini roll coder, where where um, I used a foil, a PET foil, where there was already a silver grid, um, P dot PSS and zinc oxide, and I uh, coded, like what we can see here in this picture, I coded the active layer on top of this, then another layer of P dot PSS, and what we can see here in the last picture, um, um, there was also coded uh, another silver grid uh, as electrode. And uh, yeah, the following results could be could be measured. For P1, you, there we can see that um, the efficiency, uh, yeah, for for the original polymer, it's uh, with 2.8, quite high, uh, in comparison to the manipulated one where it drops to 2.1 percent. So the incorporation of the side chain makes it makes the efficiency drop a little bit. Uh, for P2, we cannot uh, see this effect. There, the efficiencies are about, uh, about the same. Um, for P3, however, we can also see that when we incorporate the phenyl or uh, the alcohol in the donor, uh, that we get some uh, small drop of efficiency. However, when we incorporate the acceptor, uh, the alcohol in the acceptor, it uh, drops uh, even more, uh, which means it's not so good to incorporate this in um, this side chain and this position. Um, then, of course, these polymers were also measured uh, in stability because this is what I want to address here in this talk. In this talk with, um, and so the polymers or the polymer solar cells were taken and were encapsulated between two glass slides with, uh, uh, with epoxide and um, then measured under one sun for up to 80 days, um, so actually quite long. And there we can see that for P1, the manipulated polymer here in red, uh, is the stability is improved a little, uh, quite, uh, quite a bit, especially in the beginning while um, in the end they actually uh, are quite similar. Uh, when we look at P2, uh, especially on the manipulated P2, we can see that there's in the beginning quite a large drop. You can see it actually here in the small picture. Uh, already after half a day, uh, after uh, a few hours, you can see quite a large drop of, uh, of the efficiency. However, it recovers again and then performs quite, uh, or the curve pro progression is quite similar uh, than the original polymer P2. When we then go uh, and have a look on, uh, on the lifetime of uh, the P3 group, 
there we can see that the P3 itself performs like, or uh, degrades medium, is like in the middle. So we can see that the, the pink one, which is P3AOH, so where we have the uh, OH group on the acceptor, um, that it doesn't, uh, or that it degrades quite fast, so it degrades much faster than uh, the original polymer. While when we have the polymer uh, P3DOH and P3D-phenyl, uh, they are quite uh, similar. Um, and the, uh, the degradation of, of the polymer solar cells is not as fast as for uh, the original P3 here in grey, the polymer. Um, so you, we can see already an, an improvement by incorporating 10% of these side chains in, in the uh, solar cells. So to conclude my talk, um, I could synthesize these polymers with the different variation of, uh, of side chains or stability side chains. Uh, I could all apply, apply them all in road-coded polymer solar cells. And uh, the incorporation of the side chains, the phenyl and uh, the alcohol side chain, um, they give different results. Some of them were improved, but some of them were also a little bit worse than the original polymer. So for a future outlook, we can say that there still needs to be quite a lot of study uh, which side chains need to be used, maybe also change the incorporation of the amount of side chains, but uh, also um, it depends probably on the polymer or it depends on the polymer backbone uh, which is the right side chain and uh, maybe there's uh, by incorporating a side chain there's n no improvement possible. Um, so um, in the end I would like to acknowledge first of all my supervisor and the organizer, one of the organizers from this uh, conference uh, Dr. Eva Bunkart. Um, then I would like to thank doc, uh, Professor Dr. Wuder Maas and uh, Dr. J J Jürgen Kesters for um, helping me with the publications and they were also um, uh, supervising me during my external stay which I did with them in Belgium. Um, and I would like to thank you for watching my video.